Are you struggling with an understanding of exactly what a logger is? It seems that people even say logger, pills, even IPA, when they want to order a beer. It can really get confusing. So I asked two world-renowned experts how they would explain what a logger is. And their answer will definitely surprise you. Now, this was part of a longer event discussing best practices and demystifying loggering. It's an amazing event, and I'll link it up in the cards and in the description. So make sure you check that out, too. It's nice to be here, and it, it takes me back, Doug, to the, the early 70s, and that was when the English discovered lager. Everybody else had discovered it long before that, but the English finally realized there was a product called lager. And one company, what they did was they simply changed the label on an existing brand. So it was a can of beer, and they just put the word lager on it because it looked like what many people in England's idea of what a lager should look like. And of course, there's many different types of lagers. There's, there's light colored ones and there's dark ones, but nonetheless, so the simplest uh, thing to do is just change the name. I, what I always say to my students is, in my opinion, the only difference between an ale and a lager is the yeast. And an ale yeast, of course, is Saccharomyces cerevisiae and lager yeast Saccharomyces pastoriana. And I, I usually point out to them, you can't get Saccharomyces pastorianus from nature. It doesn't exist in nature. It arose somewhere in, in a brewery or a laboratory somewhere by two yeasts merging together. But then again, I always tell the story about going to a, a, a brewery, a, a wonderful brewery in London. And uh, I took a bunch of people around and we did a beer tasting before the tour. And we went around uh, on the tour and we tasted all these ales, we tasted all these lagers, and we, I went round and halfway around, and I said, so how many yeast strains do you have here? And the brewer said, just the one. So I guess our lagers are, are really koshes, aren't they? So yeah, there are people brewing beers, fermenting beers with top fermenting yeast and, and calling them lagers. It is what you, you, you think it is. The word lager means to store, but not everybody believes in prolonged storage. And I certainly don't, so... It, it's what you make of it. It's what you make of it. But in my opinion, technically, it's bottom fermenting yeast, Saccharomyces pastorianus, that makes a lager. Ginger, you're writing the book on Pilsners. We know as master brewers, we know as brewers, okay, in order to do a lager, you need a, a bottom fermenting yeast. But who says that's ourselves doing that? At the same time, it's what does the consumer say? And, and as I say in, in, in some of the pages in the book, it's if you start saying, I want to produce a very estuary flavorful beer, so should I wait to develop a, a new lager yeast or should I just take the Kölsch uh, yeast or the top fermenting yeast instead like some already do? So it's still a question, but I say that a lager is for me a a bitter, um, kind of a bitter light um, drink or beverage where you actually have fermented the starch to alcohol flavor and, and, and carbon dioxide. So there is a bit of a starch in there. And I would say that a lot of people say it should be 100% malt, malted barley. For me, in, in certain countries, that is not defined. So starch is starch. So let's start there uh, and say that you can compose a lager from whatever start source you want, and then you can build up to the end and say, okay, what is the result then going to be? But then define, as we could say, define the end first and then go through the process up to the brew house and then build your, your beer after that uh, principle. That's always what I've done. Now, this was just one clip from the entire event replay. And I've posted that replay link up in the screen and in the description. And don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know what your top takeaway was.